Hey, this is Freddie Stevenson from Trials of Triumph, and today we have a, another episode for you. We have a special guest, Richard Politano. He's a championship winning bodybuilder with over 40 years of experience in the industry. And now he specializes in bodybuilding, weight loss, and he helps people reverse type 2 diabetes. I've learned a lot from him personally, and I'm excited about getting into this interview. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good, Freddie. It's good to see you again. It's been a while. Man, definitely. It's been a while. It's great to see you. It's been you. a looking, long time. Hey, it's you're looking long good, time. man. You're looking Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. I reversed my own type 2 diabetes. Um, you remember I was real heavy at one time. Mm -hmm. Big, but I was diabetic heavy from all the medication. And um, I wasn't getting any better. They just kept upping the dosages. And I finally, I finally did my own research and realized I'm eating good. But what I'm eating, you know, the potatoes, the good carbs that I thought, they were getting me fat. So I had to do something about it. And I wanted to get off all the medication. And I um, completely changed my diet and started taking some. Now, again, under doctor's supervision, I started reducing the medication that I was taking mm -hmm. little by little because you can't just stop because your blood sugars are controlled by the medications. And once I got the diet, which I knew from all my years of bodybuilding, I just went full keto, um, my blood sugar started coming down. So I started adjusting the medication every three months, taking a little bit out and mm -hmm. adding an, an herbal supplement that's similar to metformin, which was one of the diabetes medications. And my A1C came, came down from just over 10 the first year down to 7.4. I didn't miss any meals. I never counted calories. I just eliminated the complex carbs. And I got off metformin and another injectable um, insulin the first year. I never looked at the scale. I started at 340 pounds. That's probably when you last saw me. I was mm -hmm. very heavy. And that first year, I had dropped probably 45 pounds. I Not mean, chasing the numbers on the scale. That's crazy. I wouldn't have even known you were 340. Like, you look I, good. I held like, it well. Yeah, it looked yeah, like I held incredible it, hope I held when it, I, saw I you. held it well. But it was not healthy. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't healthy. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good. So that was like end of 2021, 2022. And once I got that metformin and trulicity out of the equation, I then went after the injectable Lantus, which is an insulin. I was doing that twice a day. And I went hardcore keto. Because I only took about a month break just to give my system a break. I didn't go crazy on food. I just enjoyed myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I went hardcore keto, stopped the insulin after three days of it. My blood sugars were down in the low 110s and continually went down and down. So my A1C went from 7.4. And the A1C is the, it's the average of three months of blood sugar. Okay. Okay. So I started at 7.4 by July I was 5.7, wow. which is no longer <laughs> wow. a diabetic. And again, I didn't chase the numbers on the scale. So for 2000, uh, for 20, 2023, I was down another 45, 50 pounds. So I've lost over 95 pounds of diabetic weight, mm -hmm. excess weight that was very unhealthy. And currently I weigh 265. I take no medication at all. I take supplements for controlling blood sugars which is uh, berberine. You could buy that over the counter at any, any drug store or vitamin shop or anything. And um, that's what's helped me out. I just went back to my old bodybuilding diets. But the doctors don't tell you that. Mm -hmm. They just say, well, watch what you're eating and just you need to up your dosage a little more. And you're showing people in real time eating the right foods, it, it absolutely changes everything. I know people that have died from being a type 2 diabetic. Now, this only works for type 2 diabetics. Okay. Type 1 diabetic is a totally different different entity. You can't reverse type 1 diabetics or diabetes because the, the pancreas isn't working to secrete the insulin that's needed. So you've got to take the insulin injections to control the blood sugar. Okay. Type 2 is, is very different, very, very different. And I haven't taken medication now since last March, which was only the injectable. I've been off of that for well over a year. 
Um, it's been two and a half years since I was taken to Trulicity and the Met Foreman. So I've drastically changed my life. And I, I was a champion bodybuilder in my early 20s. Yeah. So t- from what I was to what I became, and it's not just me. It happens to a lot of people as you get older. Your body changes. Your metabolism changes, especially once you pass the age of 40. Then you start creeping up to the age of 50, and it's you know it's like someone turns on that light switch. Okay, more changes are coming. Mm-hmm. You can't stop them. Your body's aging. You just have to know what to do to keep up with it so it doesn't progressively get worse. But the majority of people don't know that. That's why when you, you walk around, you see all these people that are overweight because they don't know how to control their food intake. Food is everything, and I stress that in my YouTube videos all the time. You can train two hours, three hours in the gym, crazy, and that's really overdoing it, <clears throat> in my opinion. I only train for 30, 40 minutes at a time. But it's what you do outside of the gym that is Without so doubt. important. That's the most important factor there is. How many people at this point would you say that you've worked with and helped them reverse type 2 diabetes? I've worked with about eight people already mm. that I've helped reverse their type 2 diabetes. Wow. There's a kid I'm working with now. He's not a diabetic. He's in recovery, drug and alcohol recovery. And he was really pudgy. Matter of fact, I just put, on my, put him on my Facebook page not too long ago. Very overweight. He was starting to work out. got his life in order. Starting to train, but really didn't know what to do. He, you know, that hard and heavy, low rep stuff, and it was thought he was eating good. You know, the pastas and the rice, but it turns out it was the wrong. And he he asked me in the gym one day, you know, hey, can I ask you some questions? Sure, man. Ask what's the questions? And he started asking me all these questions. I said, I tell you what, instead of me spending hours explaining it all to you, why don't you come and work out with me and you learn it hands on? And he was in the gym as early as I was, four in the morning training. I love training early, early in the morning. And he's only missed two days set, uh, since. It's only because he was sick. He's probably one of the best training partners I've had that have been that consistent yeah, to show up. Is. Yeah, a lot of people aren't showing up there. Really. I know and that for a fact. <laughs> he has had a significant, matter of fact, I sent you the picture of him, significant change mm. in his body composition. Yeah. Significant. Yeah. He looks fabulous, dedicated, and he eats a lot of food. Yeah, yeah, that's just, the that's the biggest thing. People ask all the time, man. When you, when you see people losing weight, a lot of people assume, oh man, they just cut back. I remember training for the combine in 2017. I was just focused on being as shredded as possible mm-hmm. in front of those scouts. And the, the trainer, he's like, man, listen, you're going to lose weight. Don't worry about it. And then he gives me like six meals a day. I'm like, how am I going to lose weight eating all this food? Yeah. Like, Trust me, you're going to lose weight. That's Trust right. us. I was eating the most I've ever eaten in That's my right. life, and I was I got down to like what nine, eight, nine percent. You were lean. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. And we were we were, we were together back then. I remember. People don't understand. You got you got to eat to get those results. You have to eat the right food mm. in order to get the results that you want. You cannot starve yourself. When you starve yourself, your body puts on the brakes. It's like, uh oh, I'm not getting what I used to get. So in order for me to hold on to all this, I'm going to stop the process. Mm. You can't stop the process. You got to change what you're eating and let the body start tapping its fat sources. So in other words, eliminating all those sugars and complex carbs and let your body tap its fat sources for energy. Without a doubt. And, I'm with you. What what made you get into bodybuilding? I'm a huge fan of the art, but... My dad used to train in his younger days with a bunch of his friends that he played football with. Um... He trained with a pro bodybuilder from the 70s, Dennis Tenorino. And I didn't know this growing up as a kid. We were, on a, we were on a vacation driving down to Florida, and we stopped in some roadside gas station that had a magazine stand. And on the rack, I look at this magazine. It's like, oh, my God. I still have that magazine to this day. <laughs> I still have it. You're talking, I'm 59. You're talking 48 years ago. I still have it. Dennis Tenorino was on the cover of that magazine. I called my father, I want to be just like that. He goes, oh, that's my friend Dennis. I'm like, what do you mean that's your friend Dennis? I said, I want to be Mr. America. I want to be him. Mm-hmm. And that's that was the spark. That was my first introduction to what bodybuilding was. Now, I was still too young, but that was what I needed to see. I wanted that look. Fortunately, I had the good genetics from my parents to help me achieve what I did. Because without genetics, 
Yeah. You can only get so good and you can't change your genetics. In other words, if I gave Tiger Woods all of the training and knowledge that I have, Tiger Woods is not going to be a champion bodybuilder. Now, if he gave me all the knowledge and, and, and lessons on how to swing that club, I'm not going to be Tiger Woods. Exactly. It's yeah. not in my genes. Yeah. You can't change that. Mm-hmm. You can only enhance what Mother Nature gave you. I was fortunate to have the good genes to build muscle. And football was in my family background. My uncle played for Minnesota. My father went to New, um, University of New Mexico. My whole family, my grandfather were football stars. I played football. It wasn't my thing. I just, I was okay. Mm-hmm. I wasn't good enough, in my opinion. It just wasn't my thing. I wanted to be in the weight room. And I played up until my senior year. My senior year, I didn't participate in football, and I took a lash for it, man. Um, I could tell my father, my grand, they were all pissed. Why aren't you playing football? Because I don't want to. I want to be a bodybuilder. And that's where it all started. How was the, the process for you early on? Because I have some friends that, that bodybuild, and they, they've tried to stay natural once they go pro. But they're like, man, it's, it's not possible for you to win at this level if you're not taking it something. Years ago, you could be natural and go a pretty good distance. Not today, because the game has gotten so out of control with the drugs. Um, I'm going to be very transparent. I've been using steroids since I was about 19 years old Mm. under doctor's care, under the supervision of my coach, who was the guru of the coaches back in the day before they existed in bodybuilding, took us to a doctor for blood work. And it was low dosages of testosterone to help build some muscle while you were training. But that's not the magic recipe. That's a small tool in the toolbox. Food and training is everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. And people don't understand it. Everyone's looking for the quick fix. There are guys in the gym today taking more drugs in a cycle than I took getting ready for the Mr. Universe. And today's guys that are competing at the local or, or, or say regional level or taking more than I ever took back in the day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are dying now. They're dying because insulin is being used. Insulin growth factors are being used. Cancer medications to help stop muscle wasting are being used. You introduce that to a bodybuilder who's healthy, taking steroids, and taking growth hormone and all this other stuff, all the food and caloric intake, you're not making a bodybuilder anymore, you're making a mutant. You got you got guys on stage at five foot seven, five foot eight, weighing two hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's horrible, and they've allowed this sport to become that. It's gotten horrible. In my opinion, bodybuilding started changing in the mid nineties. From the mid nineties, let's let's say nineteen ninety five on up, it got it became a, a mass monster mm-hmm. sport. Who's going to be the biggest guy on stage? The only way to get that big is to take a lot of steroids and other stuff, insulin and growth hormone and everything else, and it's not healthy. The guys are dying. They're dying more so now than they were in the 90s and the early 2000s. There's guys that are dying that you hear hear about, and there's guys that are dying that you don't hear about because they're nobodies in this sport, but they Mm. want to be somebodies, and they're willing to die for it. There's no bowling trophy worth dying for, in my opinion. There's no money in the sport unless you're the top five guys in the Olympia. That's what I was just going to ask as far as those guys trying to maintain that lifestyle as a bodybuilder if you're not getting those big brand sponsorships. like How long can you sustain it before it starts to hurt your pockets? It hurts your pockets getting ready for a local show nowadays. When I trained for my local shows as a young, young bodybuilder in my teenage years, an NPC card or an AAU card, those were the un- the sanctions that held the show, like Amateur Athletic Union, National VZ Committee. A card back then might have been $20. The entry fee into a show might have been $20. Now I think an NPC card is well over $100. AAU doesn't exist anymore. Entry fee into a competition is a couple of hundred dollars. Not to mention to go to a national show and stay at the host hotel is several hundred dollars a night and you got to be there usually three days before for the weigh-ins yeah and not to mention the cost of the drugs the cost of the food the contest preparation it's ridiculous there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow 
your winners are making the money. Yeah. Everyone else in, in in the pack, they're not making that money. There's only a small handful that are making the money. Yeah, I see a lot of them outside of, like, competing. They're, you know, working other jobs, trying to make ends meet. Just to you have to. Continue competing. You have to. And they're still not making bank. You know who's making all the money? The social media influencers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without you know, a doubt. You, you got these guys who are nobody's in the sport. Now, I'm not going to throw any names out there. Mm-hmm. But you have guys that are nobodies in the sport that have millions of social media followers and they're getting the brand endorsements. They're being given VIP treatment at the Arnold Classic and they never stepped on stage. Yeah. Well, you've got guys competing as professionals that have earned the right to be on that stage. Mm-hmm. This person who's done nothing is a VIP. They're looking at him as a legend. Legend is, no, no. What's a legend? Somebody who's never done nothing <laughs> except take a lot of drugs at 21 years old mm. and get a social media following? But he's damn near close to a millionaire. He's not stupid, but people are idolizing that. And I, I, I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, kudos to him for marketing yeah, himself. Mark, figuring, figuring out the game and making it work to his advantage. He's, yeah. he's got it down. Mm-hmm. Kudos for him. He's the one making all the money. He don't ever have to step on the stage to prove he looks great. He don't ever have to step on that stage because he's making the bank. Not this guy's on stage. Maybe the top five guys are making a little bit of money, but it's not a salary. I think that's an important part of not just bodybuilding, a lot of a lot of industries that like we talked about it with, with football. So many people, they know how to compete, but they don't understand how to market themselves as a brand. And that's, that's right. why you see them, like these guys that aren't bodybuilders coming in and they're able to monetize themselves to levels that that's we right. could have never even imagined. Um, so many of us, we just don't understand how to market ourselves. Years ago, there was no such thing as social media. How do you market yourself when there's no such thing as social media? Mm-hmm. And the magazines back then were controlled by Weeder. Joe Weider controlled the magazines, and he put the guys that he wanted to be the top guys in the magazines. I can tell you from experience, there were so many guys that I know who were great bodybuilders competing on the other sanctioned organizations, AAU and NABA, that were better than the IFBB NPC guys, and Weider wouldn't give them a fair shake. Nope, you got to start from scratch in the NPC. You're going to tell Mr. America, Mr. Universe, he's got to start at Mr. Florida? All over again? Yeah, that's crazy. He controlled everything in bodybuilding. He I, controlled it. And I could say it firsthand because my coach was a part of early bodybuilding with the judging and all that. He was a part of the magazines. Mm-hmm. I was coached by Bob Gruskin. Bob Gruskin was What was it like group. with, with Bob? That... Bob? Bob was, he was a character. To look at him, you would never think the guy was who he was. For y'all that don't know, I'm talking about the Original bodybuilding guru. Yes. Go look it up on YouTube. Type in Bob Gruskin. That's um, who we're talking about. Bob was a little Jewish guy. If you look at the cartoons back in the day from the 70s of the mad scientist with the balding head and the strip of hair, curly hair around, little pop belly, that was Bob Gruskin. But he was a father figure to so many of us. Mm-hmm. And he only hand-selected certain guys that he knew had the genetic potential to do something in the sport. And I've seen him walk away from guys who are really genetically gifted because their personalities were assholes. Mm-hmm. So he worked with he only worked with a hand select few. And I met Bob when I was 16. And I started working with him a little bit on and off, you know, training and listening to the nutrition. About mid-18, 19 is when I went full bore with him. And by the time I hit 20 years old, I already won the Mr. East Coast. I was took second in the collegiate Mr. America, the collegiate nationals and the heavyweights. Um, competed in the junior NPC junior nationals, AAU, junior America. But I was caught in that AAU NPC split in the early 80s or okay, mid-80s. Okay. I was yeah. caught in that battle. And they wanted my coach to pick a side. You're either going to stay AAU, because Bob used to judge the Olympia back in the day, the Arnold era. You're either going to do AAU or you're going to do NPC. Bob's like, I, I just want to help the guys. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the sport. I don't want to pick sides. Mm-hmm. Well, he stood his ground, and a lot of us got blackballed. And 
I realized early on, you know, this this is a great sport and it's my love, but it's not going to be my bankroll. You know, this isn't going to build my pension or, or put that retirement money away. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity presented to me to get in law enforcement. We would like to thank Concord Coffee for sponsoring this episode. Fuel your day with Concord Coffee, Florida's favorite local roaster. Whether you're grabbing a freshly brewed cup on the go or savoring a latte crafted by our skilled baristas, Concord Coffee is all about bringing you quality and community in every sip. Visit us at our Lakeland or Gainesville locations or shop online to get your favorite beans delivered right to your door. Start your day the Concord way. Because great coffee isn't just a drink, it's an experience. Concord Coffee, where craft meets community. Make sure to visit concordcoffee.com to learn more. My dad was a policeman, and I walked away eight weeks out from the Mr. America, and I was preparing for it. I walked away from it, AAU Mr. America, it was 1989. It was a tough decision. I would have won my class. Tough decision. I always wanted to be Mr. America, but you're only Mr. America once, and you could probably compete maybe, maybe have a five-year run as a, as a pro, but the money wasn't there. And you didn't have social media back then to push yourself and promote yourself. So it was kind of a dead end because if you weren't with the Weeder crew and Weeder kind of blackballed all of the Gruskin guys, there was a couple of Gruskin guys that were NPC guys and only a small percentage of them did well. They never made bank. They were, you know, Mike Quinn was probably the only one who really took it to the farthest link with the NPC, with the, with the IFBB and the NPC. But Mike Quinn died a broke broke man about a year ago Dang. and he had almost the most magazine covers ever and he died broke Whoa. so I, it was a tough decision back then mm. but it was the right decision to go into a career that was going to give me a pension for the rest of, I retired at age 46 years old I did 22 and a half years I've been retired 14 years I just turned 59 how many people retire at 46 years old not a lot no, not unless you're military or you really set up a good 401k at an early age. Mm -hmm. So it was tough, but um, it was the right decision. And I got back into coaching after that. And it was always my love. you know. I, I, and I said to myself, I need to teach others because Bob's not going to live forever. Bob just passed away about four years ago. Um, I'm not gonna live forever. And there's only a handful of us that are still alive because we're all up there now. We're all late 50s into the 60s. When we're gone, there's no one that's gonna pass on the legacy of the training knowledge that was given to us. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons my YouTube channel started. Yeah. I wanted to educate and teach what I was taught by Bob Gruskin. When you started the YouTube channel, how long did it take you to kind of adjust? Because that's what everybody's, trying to get into YouTube now, but you see so many people that don't know how to utilize it to make it work for them. YouTube is not what everybody thinks. In order to really be successful on YouTube, and I've been in it a little over two and a half years, you have to find the right niche. And originally I started just doing the training videos and trying to be the politically correct the way I was speaking and all this, and it's not you. It's yeah, not your you personality. As I progress through my YouTube journey, I study all my videos. I read the comments and I say to myself, the knowledge is there, personality is not there. Mm -hmm. I need to turn on the switch for me to real Richie personality. And as I started doing that, my subscriber rate and my viewing time rate really increased. I um. I got monetized after a year and a half on YouTube. And a month later, I put a video out, how to train rear delts. And I said, you know what? I need to do some experimentation. And I'm originally from New York, so I let the New York personality come <laughs> out with the F-bombs and, you know, it was just me unleashed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The video went viral. 356,000 views, 7.2 thousand subscribers. That's when I knew that I needed to make the switch in my personality. The information was always there. I needed to present it differently. 
And since then, I'm just, I'll probably hit 22,000 subscribers today. Mm -hmm. I'm getting 1,000 subscribers like every two to three days now. Since May 7th, I've, ha I've gotten 9,000 more subscribers Whoa. since May 7th. And my videos are getting a ton of views. Um, I got 1,000 subscribers off of a tricep video that I did about five or six weeks ago. And I, I realized I was putting videos out, educating people on how to train and, and the diet and how to eat. Well, the younger crowd really wasn't interested in what I had to say. Mm -hmm. Because you can't tell the young kids today what to do. They know everything. Everybody knows everything. What's that old guy know? But you'd be freaking surprised what I know. You know, I am a walking encyclopedia for bodybuilding and nutrition because of Bob. Um, when I realized looking at the analytics that my crowd was that 35, 40, all the way up to 60, I started gearing my videos towards the older crowd. And... I've got a lot of viewing time. A lot of people are watching it that are that, let's say, 40 to 60 plus year age range. But it's not just putting a video together. You know, I'm, um, I went fishing today and caught the big one. You know, or I have the cure for cancer. That's a, I use that analogy a lot with people. Yeah, I, I got the cure for cancer. I put a video out there and nobody watched it. And it's the cure for cancer. Well, you got to have the right search terms, mm -hmm. and you got to have the right description and the right keywords that are in the description describing exactly what your video is all about. And a big mistake people make on YouTube is, "Hey guys, I'm Coach P. Thank you for watching Championship Muscle. Today's video is about click. You just lost them. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what you're saying. What are you giving me? What am I gonna get out of this video? And I learned because I had a, a, a video guy make a, a smoke screen thing, championship muscle with the sound effects. Looks really cool. Nobody gives a shit. Mm -hmm. What are you going to tell me? You ain't got the tits and ass. Yeah. You, what are you going to tell me? Uh, what are you going to do? Sure, to keep, you gotta, yeah, you got to get us. What are you going to do for me to keep my attention mm -hmm. on this video? What do you got? So you got to give it to him as soon as you put that camera on. Hey, guys. You're over 50 years old and your workout sucks? I'm gonna tell you why, coming up right after this. Bam, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, you know what, my workouts really haven't been that good. I better listen to what this guy says. Mm -hmm. It's like in sports and football, you see all these young kids that are trying to get offers from schools and they have a highlight tape and then their best plays are at the back of the highlight tape. People are already clicked off after those first three plays. In yeah, you gotta catch interested. their attention first. They're not interested. So in order for you to catch that viewer audience, you have to tell them what you're going to give them right up front. Not the, hey, my name is Richie, and um, I've been in bodybuilding for 43 years. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. But there is no manual on YouTube to tell you how to do this. Mm -hmm. It's learning through trial and error. I made a lot of mistakes back in the day in YouTube, but you learn from your, from your mistakes and I constantly watch my videos over and over again to see how can I improve on what I've done in my videos now like I said in the beginning I used to be politically correct try to be professional big you know just understandable you're getting me raw uncensored if you don't like what I gotta freaking say go find another channel mm -hmm. you're gonna get the truth in bodybuilding about you know what I have to say you're gonna get the truth and I guarantee you there ain't very, very many guys out there that were trained by Bob Gruskin because I know for a fact I was with the man over 40 years. Wow. There ain't a freaking trainer out there that has the knowledge I have. There might be a few, and there are, because I'm not the gift of the sport. But today's trainers are computer-generated. You find a training course, you pay for it, you take the course, you take the, tre uh, the test, bam, you're a certified trainer. You don't have an ounce of experience in the gym. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to train the different body types. You don't know how to, you know, different types of foods and diets. You don't know anything, but you pass the test. And you're a trainer. Well, I want to be a master trainer. Take the master trainer course. Pass the test. You're now a master trainer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One person I was working with took a nutrition course. This person puts them off 
themselves off on social media as a nutrition expert and has never worked with a freaking client in person. their life. That's, that's the problem. But you're a today. nutrition expert. Sit me at a table across from you and let's go head to head. And let's see what your $2,000 certification generated off of a computer is going to do with me with 43 years of experience and I don't have a single certification. I won't take those stupid computer generated courses. They can't teach me nothing. Or should I say, can't teach me anything. Mm -hmm. You got everything already. The experience, you've been coached by the bodybuilding guru. You went through the grind yourself. That's Sometimes that's really, I know that you need this these paper paper qualifications. Some people are like, no, as me, me, even as a speaker, I thought for the longest I would take all these courses. And then I remember one day my dad comes in. He's like, man, listen, God's gifted you. You don't have to take all these courses to teach you how to speak. You know how to speak. That's right. And you, gotta you speak have life from your heart. Yeah. You and- got to speak from your heart in a language that people can understand. The language you speak to your friends, just like you and I are talking right now. You know me a long time. Mm-hmm. Am I talking anything different than nah, I talk to you in the gym? Not at all. Okay. And that's the way you got to speak to people because that's how they're going to relate to you. Yep, without a doubt. You can't put on a phony personality and expect to win an audience. People pick up on that. They pick up on it. I got one question I want to ask you before Mm -hmm. we wrap up. You talked about, you know, the the steroids, the PEDs, and Mm -hmm. and the bodybuilding and how it's just only a small part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people discount the hard work that comes in into bodybuilding why do you think so many bodybuilders are just athletes in general that are taking peds why are they afraid to admit that they're taking them because like we said man it doesn't take away the fact that you've been grinding like you can't just take steroids and just have abs in the morning you got to put in some work you got to be disciplined everybody's looking for the easy way out and a lot of people who are taking the gear will tell you no 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 i'm natural you're not, and I say, you're not lying to me, pal. I've trained quite a few guys, and when I would ask them, hey, you know, what are you taking? I don't take nothing. <laughs> I don't mean to drop the F-bomb. You ain't fooling me. Yeah. I've been in this game before you were born. You're not fooling me. Mm-hmm. What are you taking? Because I need to know if you want me to work with you. And I've walked away from a lot of people. Um, you can enhance your genetics and train and get a really good physique without the use of anabolics especially with the supplementation that is on the market today. Mm -hmm. The protein powders and all the, I'm not a big fan of pre-workouts, but all of the nutritional supplements, you can really put a good physique on, but you have to know how to train and you have to know how to eat. It's not just going into the gym and slinging weights. What was the first thing I told you when we started training? High rep drop sets. Yeah, yeah, you were the first person. I'm a big lifter. I'm thinking you go in the gym, lift heavy weights all the time, and then I've gotten the strongest that I've ever been working with you. We weren't even lifting crazy weight. Like, no. light, mo- light to moderate, yep. doing high reps, and I'm stronger than I've ever been in my life. What does the combine have you guys do? How many times can you bench two and a quarter? Yep. That. Why wouldn't they say how many times can you bench 405? They don't care how strong you are. They care about your muscle conditioning. Mm-hmm. Muscle conditioning comes from high repetitions. The only way you're going to get high repetitions out is by light, moderate to light weight. Now, for a younger guy, that moderate to light weight is going to be a lot heavier than it is for a guy my age. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how much to lift. I can only tell you to lift the weight that you can handle for right the right form, the proper form for those high repetitions. And I talk, my first set on some, on some exercises is up to 40 reps of a moderate weight, and then I start drop setting. Mm-hmm. That's, go unless you're a power lifter, low reps is your thing. If you're training as a bodybuilder and you wanna stimulate muscle tissue, you have to dig deep and get uncomfortable with yourself and get into the high repetitions because that's where you stimulate muscle tissue. Okay, and man, suit, I'm, I'm excited about this. You want to get back to the gym now and do it all over again? (laughs) Right now, I'm in the process. Of course, I've been doing my lifting, but I'm up in my cardio right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, um, and I'll send you the invite soon. We got our wedding coming up in a couple weeks. Oh, cool. But yeah, um, now I'm I'm cutting cutting down, kind of been, you know, bulking, but 
cutting down right now. Get it fit in your tux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to fit in the tux. Cutting down. Um, so I'm going through that process right now. Mm-hmm. But man, I appreciate the the insight that you provided today. Mm-hmm. I know so many people is going to help them, especially from you got people that are struggling with weight loss, putting on muscle, all those things. But then yes. reversing type two diabetes, you have people struggling, losing lives every every single year. Yes. And what yes. you're doing to save lives out here, that's that's amazing. If, if, if anybody is interested, go to my YouTube channel, Championship Muscle, look in the playlist, and I have all the body parts and the health and nutrition, reversing type two diabetes, all those videos are there for you to watch. Subscribe to the channel, there's so much information in those videos. I have one-on-one coaching online where you have me for an entire year. If you really wanna take your training up to the next level, I've got video training courses that I put together that go in, into more detail than my YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're not expensive. And there's a link to those, those sites in every one of my descriptions. I have a buy me a coffee site. I put everything in there, you click it, you pay for it, and it gets sent to you. It's all digital stuff. Love it. And the the value that you would get out of me as a coach one on one. You and I work together in a gym together, mm-hmm. so you know what I'm talking about. And this is when I'm in the league. Right. In a field training with you. And 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 the, the the stuff that I have in these videos and having me on the phone one on one, you are gonna really take your your training and your conditioning to the next level. I'm I guarantee it. If you're trying to reverse your type two diabetes I'm the guy to come to because your doctor doesn't want you to reverse your type 2 diabetes because they're making money off the medication they're prescribing you. Right. But they're killing you at the same time. I can help you reverse your diabetes. I'm not a doctor, but I know how to do it. Mm. It's through nutrition and through food, not drugs. Exactly. And on social media, where can people find you? My social media is coach underscore Richard underscore Politano for Instagram. Um, Richard Politano on TikTok. Uh, LinkedIn is Richard Politano. I've, I've got all of them covered and they're also listed in the description of my videos. All of my social media links are in there. Okay. So there's a way to get a hold of me. Okay. And, and um, I think one thing we didn't mention is your book on Amazon, Un- Untold yes, Secrets of yes. Bodybuilding. Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding is a book that I wrote I wrote the book in my head, taking a road trip up north. And I said, you know, I gotta put a book together. One of my buddies was telling me, you really need to write a book. And I've, I've heard this for quite a few years. And I said, I wouldn't know what to call it. So I figured, you know what? Untold secrets of bodybuilding. What everyone kind of sees, but doesn't want to say. And it's a lot of my sarcasm in the book. I call it as I see it. And there's a picture of myself and my brother on the cover. It's available on Amazon, Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding. Um, It's available for a digital download on the Buy Me a Coffee link. And I wrote the book in my head as I was driving up north. I I had the the format already out, the different chapters. And I would think about the title and where I wanted to go with it as I was driving. Then I would, you know, had a stick recorder. I would record some of my thoughts. And when I got to where I was at, I sat in, the, in a hotel for a few hours and I started writing the book and within two days I had the book written. Now it is not a freaking lengthy novel, it's maybe 26 pages, mm. but it's a great read. Um, I dedicated the book to Bob Gruskin and um, it's getting it got five star reviews. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. I wrote a book and it's getting five star reviews? Oh my God. Y'all make sure to go grab that on, on Amazon after you listen to this interview, show some love. And yes, please. Don't be on don't be on Instagram saying that you came up with it. So credit <laughs> the guy that came up with the information because you see all you see all these copycats on social media that don't want to credit the originator. So make sure to go follow him on social media. Go follow on and subscribe on YouTube, and make sure to go buy the book, support his brand. Because right yeah. now you're pulling up on 22. I should hit 22,000 subscribers today. By next week, it should hit 25. This is based on the analytics that are being told to me by the guy I work with in Russia. Um, by the end of the year, they're predicting between 50 and 100,000 subscribers. So let's make, let's, if we can do our part, let's make it 100 to 150. Yes, we can please subscribe. I guarantee you guys are gonna get an education in bodybuilding that you're not gonna hear anywhere else because I only put the truth out 
about the sport of bodybuilding and nutrition and weight loss and reversing type 2 diabetes. Not the bullshit you hear on social media. 90% of social media influences are full of shit. Facts. Facts. Yeah, they are. They're full of shit. I'll be the first one to say it. Now, you're hearing, you're hearing it from somebody with 40 years of experience in the industry that's changing lives daily and didn't just sign up and get a certificate. He's actually has no credentials and results. No. And I do not make any money off of my YouTube channel. Yes, I'm monetized, but the payment that you get every month is peanuts compared to the wealth of knowledge that you would gain from it. It is right. what it is. I do it because I love it. You heard it here first, man. I appreciate you, man. This is a great one. Uh, I'm excited for it to come up. Appreciate you coming and joining us.